Okay, so our next step will be to translate uh, the slides uh, into some let's say, practical implementation in this project, and then we can see the next steps. Um, so, uh, as we saw, the, the work, the starting work is done uh, on the server side. Okay, so um, basically, I'm opening some window on the server side of this project. And uh, let's uh, clear some of the windows. And uh, what we need to do in uh, this is a normal, uh, say, it's the, um, the React API server that we have uh, we had from last week uh, simplified in the sense that we only have the um, exams and courses APIs. As we said, it's just a minimal implementation, just to to uh, not to have a lot of code and just to focus on what we want to do, what we want to be done. Okay. So if we want to add authentication to that, we should uh, at least add, uh, install uh, Passport. We need to ins install Passport local. And we already know that we need to install Bcrypt modules uh, in our application, our server application. Okay, we need uh, at least uh, install uh, Passport and Passport local and then uh, the bcrypt library for checking the uh, the code okay for checking the hashes and uh, uh, so we are um, at the beginning let me do this here uh, loading passport and uh, let's make it larger passport uh, from the passport library require passport and uh, passport local from passport local okay uh, and we can then initialize uh, the a, a, a passport so initialize and configure passport like we did with passport.use and we, we we need to provide in the user method um, a, a strategy a new strategy so a new object of type strategy passport local dot strategy Okay, it's a bit different from the slides, but the, the idea is the same. Strategy is a class defined inside the password local uh, module. Okay, it depends on whether you are import defining the password local or the strategy with different names, uh, whatever. And in this strategy, in the definition of the strategy, we must define the callback function, the verification function. Okay, so the verification function takes uh, uh, the username, takes uh, uh, um, a password, and takes uh, the done callback, and we must, of course, implement uh, its code. Okay, so inside here we are inside the verification callback. For authentication, uh, and we need to to check the password, as we said, uh, compared with with the um, with the database, basically. Okay, uh, we have the this username, we have this password. We must check whether they are okay or not. Okay. Um, We can have any logic we, we want. For example, I, I could write something as stupid like uh, if uh, username is equal to password. So every uh, user with uh, username test and password test, uh, username ABC and password ABC will enter uh, and so on. It's up to us actually to do uh, to decide what kind of, uh, what kind of, uh, of authentication to do. Okay. Uh, normally, we would need to check uh, with the database, uh, and so we need to implement some database methods uh, 
for um, for checking with the users so maybe i add a new module here a new file i we add the exam dao so we call, we can have the user dao when we can implement uh, in this module uh, dao operation for validating users so the use the table user in our database and basically, we have this getUser method. Uh, we want to export it, so we, we, we may set it as an attribute of the exports object. GetUser. It will be a function that needs to receive a username and password. Basically, in, in our case, we know the username it will be an email. And will return uh, the validation information. Okay, so we are deep now inside the method that needs to query do the query uh, on the database and uh, check uh, the password and so on. So this is the code we had uh, in the slides. Uh, we need first to access database uh, const database. I can copy from from XMDAO require database because I'm lazy and uh, okay and so with the db we can um, use a query uh, we, we must of course uh, um, have a promise okay create a new promise like we did before return new promise with resolve reject for encapsulating the asynchronous code in database, this normal code. Now, right now we are in DAO mode, in database mode. Okay, so everything will happen like in the other DAO methods. The only difference is that the query that we need to run is a query for retrieving uh, uh, select uh, all the attributes from user where uh, the what's name of the of the field that we need to check is called email email equal to the parameter that we have okay and so we now we must uh, uh, execute this query uh, we need just the first result so maybe the b dot get we don't know. we don't need db.all to get all of them because there will be zero results or one result okay and uh, uh, we run the sql we need to set the parameters so this parameter is the email that we got as an argument and then finally we have the callback from the uh, from the sqlite so error and a row because not rows but just row because only we have one so here we are we are inside the callback where we get the data uh, and we can check if we have some error from sqlite we can easily reject uh, the the promise and pass on the other information. Otherwise, uh, otherwise uh, there are two options. The first is we didn't have any user. So uh, if uh, row is undefined, uh, otherwise, uh, the, lo the row is defined. So in this case, we have a database error. In another case, we have a, a user not found. So in this case, we um, fulfill the promise, resolve, but we say that the user was not found, false. So we have a user not found situation. And otherwise, 
of course we have the user found so we, we must check uh, for the password so we must uh, first of all compare uh, the two cases so we have uh, um, bcrypt ah, so we need to import bcrypt require bcrypt and so we what should we, we compare we should compare the password that what we got with the password that that is hashed into the, the, the database table okay so we have uh, uh, bcrypt compare we are comparing some data with the encrypted version and returns a promise hmm? so uh, compare uh, the password which is the password which is the clear text one with the the hashed version that we get from the database row dot row uh, dot password and it may succeed or fail uh, so after the the comparison i have a promise they will tell me the result of the comparison and again, so we are in the callback of the comparison. If uh, the result is OK, so if the password matches, we, I will uh, resolve this uh, uh, promise. So this resolve here is the resolution of the database promise, OK? So in the callback of the bcrypt comparison, I decide to resolve the get user promise with some user object that I'm going to create in a second. Otherwise, we resolve with false to say that uh, uh, password not match password not matching. And the only thing I still need to do is to create the object that they want to return. So maybe I have the ID with row.id. We have the username, which is the row.email. We have uh, the full name, which is coming from row.name. So all the fields that are of interest except the password of course okay so this is basically our if we didn't make any mistake is the uh, DAO call that is used to uh, receive email and password and can return an object describing the user if the login is okay false if the login is not okay or an exception, a rejected promise, uh, if uh, there are some problems with the validation, with database, basically. And this is the code that we are going to call here in the, I'm going back to the server, .js, let me save this file. Uh, I'm going back to the to the verification that where actually we can delegate to this uh, new module, const user DAO. Require oh, sorry. user DAO where we can use the user DAO and uh, uh, call the get user with the copy of the username and password. And uh, we do different things based on the results of the validation so the results would be as some user object and then we have a catch also for catching the error 
okay so we are asking to database uh, please validate these credentials if uh, a validation is okay i have a user object that may be false or maybe may contain some information and a catch that will be um, say generated only when there are some database errors so i can implement this code uh, what should I do with the with the then case with a fulfilled promise? Okay, I need to check if user is false or not. If user, if the user is okay, then I will uh, tell passport that the validation was successful. So I called the done in in all the three cases. In all the cases, I, I must call done in different ways. So in this case, uh, I don't have any errors uh, and the user is valid. So null user. Otherwise, the user is not valid. So the login was not good. The password was not good. So I, I don't have any error, but uh, I don't have any user either. And maybe I can give you also a message uh, um, username or password they're wrong and so I conclude the, the callback and in the third case I conclude the callback the, with the error uh, in the third case I will return the error itself so the first parameter is not null so I can return the, um, the error object and pop possibly a second parameter for the, uh, for the message if you want, but the error, the error already contains an error message, okay, which is the one generated by, um, by, by the, the um, SQLite library. So we're passing it through. So this is the first step. We did just configured a strategy by telling passport what it needs to do whenever it uh, needs to validate a couple username and password okay we cannot test it until we have some front end to to use it of course but uh, let's go forward and see what are the next steps okay uh, the next steps are uh, about uh, handling the session, creating the session. Okay, uh, so we must enable uh, Express uh, to uh, implement a session, to use cookie, because by default, the session is not uh, automatically generated by Express. We need to uh, um, install another middleware, which is called S Express Dash, Dash Session here. And um, it's a very, very simple session manager which just stores information in memory. So, of course, it's not uh, suitable for production websites where you have a lot of traffic. But it's very simple because you don't need, uh, need any, any configuration for storing information into files or into databases that will require extra configuration. So, the simple case is uh, we'll just use uh, this uh, middleware called Express Session. And we are we install into the app, so into Express, uh, we install this middleware called session. And of course, the session must be it, it takes its own configuration information. So the session object uh, has some uh, properties that we, that we need to, to set up. We'll see in a moment. And then there's a second level. So the first level is we enable HTTP sessions with cookies and uh, lock, uh, server session storage in memory. And the second step here is to tell a passport to use sessions. OK, um, and of course, we must do that after we initialize the session. So passport dot initialize the password dot sessions are methods that we be, must be called uh, after we create the session. The session object uh, itself uh, contains some uh, some attributes uh, where the most important one is uh, uh, the secret hmm? secret is a string that is used as a seed for signing the um, the session id 
So the session ID is generated automatically, uh, randomly, but uh, in addition, we want to sign it so that the sessions generated by one server are not compatible with the session generated by another server because they are signed by different uh, 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 strings. Hmm? Um, the other parameter, usually we, we have this, this uh, resave uh, that we set to false uh, because there was a default, uh, but this default was deprecated as true. So they are asking us to set it to false. Uh, and uh, uh, and this that the um, and the same is uh, these are just a method for saving the session every time that will slow down the application. That's not so so important. The the, the mandatory one is this uh, secret. Hmm? Uh, so again, we go to the code to implement also this part. For implementing that, we need to again install express dot session. Okay, and in our server, we need again to uh, require this express middleware, the session middleware, const session require express session. So uh, session middleware. And that we must be configured at the HTTP level before configuring passport. So, we have all the requests there, and so we initialize uh, initialize and configure sessions, HTTP sessions. So simply, uh, we tell uh, sorry, no, we can, uh, the app should be created before. So. Uh, Let's, uh, sorry, I need the app. Uh, I, I will do it later. Okay, set up middleware, set up, initialize and configure a TP session uh, without, with the other middlewares. Okay, so app dot user, the session information, the session middleware, and the session middleware requires a configuration object to describe how it works. Okay, so this is not a callback, it's just a simple object. Uh, which is, uh, by default, we must set a secret that we can Decide. It's just a string, but it needs to be different. So you choose your own. I choose my own, and it should be secret because otherwise people could validate or read into the into the um, the cookies. So this and that and other um, whatever message you want, a string, and then we need to set this resave to false and. Uh, this save initialized um, initialized to false sorry it's not a semicolon it's just a comma because we are just object pro. so these two are just uh, suggestions that we you find in the documentation of the um, of the session library okay um, there's nothing more, more to be understood um if you read the, the documentation they will tell you that these are the suggested values uh, to, to, to to specify okay from this point on uh, at every time since we are uh, registering a middleware okay so this means that every time we have a get and a post and whatever call we have this uh, middleware will, will be called and so a cookie will be received, and if I receive a cookie, I will try to unlock the session storage. And, and on the other way, uh, um, if I'm re sending a response, for example, this one, I will be attaching to the response a cookie, which is the same continuation of a cookie I received, or a new one that I generate uh, if this is the first call. Okay? So after registering this, all the next routes uh, will automatically receive or and or regenerate uh, 
a new session cookie and a new session ID transparently. Okay, I don't need to do anything more just for having the session cookie at the HTTP level. And then I want the cookie to store passport information, information from passport. So I must tell passport to use those cookies. Hmm? So I, I, I need to tell passport to use session cookies. And this again, we just register additional middleware that after I process the cookie, I will uh, give them to uh, to passport uh, app dot use passport dot initialize. Sorry, and app dot use passport dot session. So these are this initialize and this session are two different middlewares in um, in uh, in passport that enable passport to store their information in the session. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, code that we must uh, just uh, trust. Okay, you have to write this code for it to work. So that's uh, why I said there's not. Uh, um, a good documentation or a good very very good explanation of course you can dig into into those for for understanding how they work but basically most of the information you find is uh, write the instruction in this place and they work hmm? at least we are trying to, to reason about what they do but the details of course will need uh, really a lot of digging uh, um, uh, what initialize does for example uh, compared to what session does but uh, from the architecture point of view we are just adding middlewares to all the calls that will follow them, to do all the routes that we are implementing them. So, Passport is now uh, ready to store into the session storage the information about the current authenticated session. Okay, so what we you remember the pictures that we had before when here, when we had some information into the session storage. So right now we created the session storage with the express middleware, express session middleware, and we instructed Passport that it can store into the session its own information. Okay. Now we need to decide which information goes inside. Because Passport doesn't know if our information about the user is just the ID, or it's the name, it's the email, it's the eye color or whatever. Okay, um, and so we need a further step. One, and three, session personalization uh, means uh, what and how to store information into the session. Okay, so we have the session storage with some objects, some attributes linked to the session ID. We don't see the session ID because it's handled by them. We don't see the cookies. We don't need to see any of that. We own, it's all managed by the session middleware and the passport session uh, or other middleware. What we need to do is uh, what kind of, we'll specify what kind of information we store in the session. And we have, uh, uh, we need to provide two more functions, which is called serialize and deserialize. You see there are serialize user and deserialize user. It's not a general function for ending the session, but just for the user information. Um, and uh, uh, so that will be decide which information you will be put into the into the session. We remember that in the um, in the validation callback, okay, we return a user object. Okay, we return a user object with the ID, uh, with the email, and so on about the user. This is a, a, a JavaScript object. And we need, we want to store all these objects or a part of this object inside the session storage. So these two functions uh, do exactly this job. Serialize user 
will serialize the user information to be stored in the session. So what do I want to be stored in the session? And so we have this, sorry, this serialized function. Go away. The ser what? The serial, no, why, why are you writing? I don't want you to write. Okay. The serialized user uh, will uh, call, will be automatically called whenever passports want to store information to the session. Basically, before every uh, request is, is completed, before, say, returning the response, I need to store information in the server. And uh, uh, we just need to pro uh, provide a, a callback. Uh, so we, I get user, which is an input variable to my callback that contains the user returned by known the, to, to passport thanks to the authentication callback at the first time or retrieved from a session in the next times. And then a done callback that I should call with two parameters. One is null, no errors. And the second, because we are just serializing the data. And second is uh, uh, an object to be stored in the session. It may be as simple as just an ID. In this case, it's just a number. It's still an object. It's a very simple one. It's a very short one. So if I have, we have a lot of sessions, we can, we can just uh, store the ID of the session, for example. And so in the session ID, I, I will only have for this session the ID attribute and no more. And then at the next call, whenever I receive a new HTTP call, I will get the cookie. From the cookie, I will extract the session ID. From the session ID, I will extract, passport will extract uh, the user information. In this case, it's only an ID. And then passport will call the other function, deserialize user, that will get as a first information the info that was saved in the session and the second is the callback of course uh, where i can return a new a new object um, the id in this case is just a number maybe in user number two and we may for example use the database for retrieving the full user information about uh, this specific uh, user ID. And so we can return this full user information, uh, again, available uh, for, the, for the programmer. Okay, so this is a trick. If we don't want to, we, we may either store a minimal amount of information in the session, the ID, and then every time we need to retrieve some user information, we need, of course, to query the, data, the database, starting from the ID, give me all the user information. Or we could it make simpler? We can we could store in the uh, in the session all the attributes of the user. In the, in our case, they are very few, so it doesn't make a big difference. And we can retrieve them and just reconstruct the object from the serialized version in the in the database in the in the session. Okay. In both cases, what happens is that at the end of all this process. In the request, in your code for the route, you have this new attribute for the request. Request.user. Request.user will be the user object when you finish the authentication or the user object when you retrieve it from the session. So this is all the mechanism, the mechanics that is needed so that the server at every API call knows the information about the current user. User is a predefined uh, attribute. So re request uh, will have a query, will have body, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Passport will add this new attribute, user, to our to your um, to your callbacks to your routes. Okay. But for doing that, of course, we need to help passport to store information uh, in the session and store the session into the cookies and so on. Hmm? So it needs a lot of, a lot of infrastructure for this simple simple case. 
this is the example where we store only user id we could just store the user here so the full object that will be serialized with the, all the, the fields here in the in database so in this case it will be much easier because if all the information is already stored in the in the in the session we don't need to query the, the database every time we get a new request we will have just to return the object itself so done null and uh, um, id uh, so it will not be id it will be user and again user okay uh, it's our choice what to, what we want to store in the, in the session the full user information or just um, an id from which we can retrieve uh, all of that uh, depends on how, how whether we want to load more the session or whether we want to load more the database in terms of uh, data handling hmm. uh, in the second case uh, the session will become larger but uh, we don't we we skip uh, one query every time we get a new request hmm. uh, it's uh, bo both uh, both solution works uh, depends on what you prefer to do of course hmm. Uh, that's why Passport doesn't do it automatically, because it doesn't know what you want to do with your data and how much data do you really need uh, in, your, uh, in your application. All of this, just to remember, let's not get lost in all the steps, uh, all of this is for having this uh, request.user information in your callbacks. So finally, we are going to the interesting part when we do really the uh, authentication authorization. Up to now, we just did configuration in order to have everything ready for uh, having user information into our callbacks. So uh, maybe in our examples, only the ID is enough because when we want to do the get exams, we only need the ID of the user for making the SQL query for getting the right exam for that specific user. We don't need the, the email, we don't need the full name and so on. So maybe we don't need to deserialize a full object. We just uh, we will be just happy with returning uh, not the full user but just the ID, for example. It's up to us. We have to decide what object goes into the session, and what object represents the user information. There are two different notions. One is the user object, and the other is some information extracted from the user object, some or all information extracted from the user object that we want to store in the session. I'm sorry this is so complicated, but uh, that's how, how it works. OK, uh, this is just a simple code to write. We can go forward a moment um, to see what's next. Uh, right now, we did, we did a lot of configuration. OK, now we can do actually the real authentication and the real authorization. Authentication means login. So if everything is set up, we can create a route that we want. Uh, for example, login or session usually will be a post. It must be a post because remember the local strategy expects to have some information in the body of the request. And uh, we just uh, use for this only this login this middleware password.authenticate with local which is the name of the strategy we need this name because passport may support different strategies simultaneously in the same website so he needs to see check okay what strategy do you want me to use for authenticating this so this is everything we need to do uh, we are telling um, Passport, we are telling it basically uh, Express that before processing this, uh, this, uh, this route, it must uh, use this middleware. And this middleware authenticate will use all the information that we provided before in the uh, configuration of the strategy. So whenever we use local here, we are referring to this specific uh, verification callback that we created. So at this point, when the user calls the login API, Passport will check for the body of the request, will extract username and password, 
will call this callback and will get the user information returned by this callback and make it available to me in the request request.user so i can use the user object that was returned by the authentication mechanism so we don't this is the, the point the moment in which we call the validation callback this user may be false or may contain uh, a real uh, authentication user basically this function uh, this middleware is implemented in a way that if the authorization is not successful uh, the callback is not called okay so this is called only if if it's successful so we can assume that the user exists okay uh, we'll see in the next slide what to do when the, the authentication fails and so uh, the user object has been populated from the validation the callback and we can return the JSON to the to the front end. At this point, the front end knows that we have a valid session. It can initialize uh, the, the 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 context, uh, whatever whatever front end does uh, with this information. Okay. Um, so this is the first time in which we create the user object, and the user object will be immediately serialized into the session storage. So under the hood. We don't see it, but uh, the user object is also serialized into the session object using this serialized user uh, method. Okay, this is what happens at login time. Um, at this point, uh, well, we are back in the front end uh, when the, this information is retrieved, uh, and you can store it uh, in some text, some uh, state. Uh, you can store it in some context, uh, uh, and so on. Okay. Uh, because the the application at least know, needs to know which user is logged in, for example, for showing the name, for example. Um, you, the front end knows that the server remembers also which user logged in. So we don't need to pass the user around, the user ID around back and forth between the client and the server because the server already remembers that in the session. Hmm. Um, Another option or something simple, simple to do is maybe to um, to use a, an API like a user get user information or whatever that is able to get information about a, a given user, and you can put that into a user fact when we initialize a component. So a component, uh, when the session when the login is, success, is successful, we create a component, and uh, when we render the component, the component itself. Uh, in the user fact uh, will load the information that it needs mm -hmm. and and this information will be stored into the state uh, maybe it can be forwarded through a context uh, uh, but it's no different than any other kind of front-end information basically mm -hmm. uh, except that it's created by this special let's say callback which is the login and uh, um, okay let's go back to the server we did the login we authenticated the user, and at some time uh, we need to prevent some uh, uh, routes to be called if the user is not authenticated. So the point of all the authentication is to able to uh, allow or deny a normal user for calling, for example, the um, get courses API. So we have a special login call that does all the authentication and creates initialize the session with this information and then what do we do uh, we know that everything is based on the cookies and the session and so on but from the point of view of the code we have a further uh, we have a function a method which is added by passport in the request which is called request dos dot is authenticated okay uh, so this method is injected into the request object uh, always it's always injected and this becomes true or false true if the session is valid so it was authenticated correctly in the past false it means the user didn't authenticate or the authentication failed so in our code we could check uh, Every time we make a request, we can check if the user is authenticated 
then we can do whatever we want otherwise we can return a, a message in our code we can decide here uh, in the API courses we can check if the request is authenticated then we uh, do the code otherwise we do something else okay otherwise we reject the call we return with the 401 code status code for example in order uh, to avoid doing that for each and every call for each and every route the easy way is to create your own middleware okay so here we are creating a middleware we call it is logged in and this is a very simple middleware it just calls uh, uh the authenticated and if it's okay return next uh, this is the convention for the call for the middleware the middleware are changed in sequence and each of them may call next to pass the processing to the next one okay so um it can uh i'm doing this if i call in next then the processing will continue and finally, the, the control will go to the to the callback that will do the API implementation, the, the list courses uh, implementation. If I'm not calling next, I can return earlier. And so I'm preventing all the further uh, computation. And this means, for example, that if the request is not authenticated, I will inject a 401 status error saying, OK, you are not authenticated. I return this, this JSON error with the status code, and I don't let uh, the, 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 the function to be executed. So in this case, whenever we want to protect some get, some post, or some function, we just add our own middleware in between, saying, OK, before processing the request, the real request, just check uh, the authentication. And this is authenticated is totally managed by Passport. So we don't need to remember about cookies or whatever. And if we are authenticated, we know that in this body, in the body of this uh, callback, we have full access to request.user, which is the data that has been deserialized again from the session storage. Um, so we can either implement the logic inside every route or create a very simple middleware that does exactly the same thing for every route in which you want to call it. And finally, the last uh, uh, function is just the logout function, which is really simple. You are just uh, calling the logout method on the request, which is, an, again, uh, some method which is uh, injected by Passport. And Passport will take care of destroying everything, so the session storage, uh, the, the session cookie, and so on. Uh, the information from the session cookie and so on. So it's just one call. Uh, you may want uh, to have again uh, an is logged in middleware here because it doesn't make sense uh, to log out from a session which is not valid because you don't have the user information, for example. But it doesn't do any harm because logout is clever enough uh, not to raise any errors if the session is not uh, is not logged in. So this is the, the, the full picture. Um, I'm afraid we don't we don't have time to to implement all of this. I if we if you allow me, I will just pick up some implementation that uh, we already did, and maybe just show you uh, the, the main the main highlights of uh, uh, what can be done. Okay. So this is the code that we are going to, to, to publish also later, but uh, I want to spend a couple of minutes uh, in commenting the main points. Uh, OK, so uh, this is the code. It's, uh, this is not the project that we were working on. It's the, just a solution. OK, you see here we have the solution uh, tag in the so it's, it's already complete. Uh, we see the middleware is the same as we had in the slide with the right 401 code. And uh, uh, the login, let's, let's comment about the login function. Here it was called API sessions. So maybe let's zoom in a bit. Instead of API login, it's, uh, it's the same, just a name, uh, with a post method. And we see that we are calling passport.authenticate. Okay, with a local strategy. 
in the slides we only saw the the simple version where we are um, calling authenticator in, as a middleware and then do something if the authentication is good uh, we do nothing in the other case and here we have, we have the full uh, version in which we uh, authenticate is used as a normal function is not as a middleware and so it will call a callback with again uh, error user in and info uh, error should be null whenever uh, the authentication is good and in that case user will contain the information so the normal case in where is when error is null uh, and the user is not uh, is not false and this is it goes into this case here um, so this is again is registered as a middleware so i need to call next to proceed but what i do here is uh, uh, i can call the login function that will uh, um, set up all the session i will i mean there is the way I, in which i tell that the login is successful uh, and if there are no further errors so if the login is successful then i can return the, the user object uh, to the caller so the code that is uh, useful in the normal case when everything is okay is uh, authenticate that will do the query to the database login with the user information and on the callback uh, return information to the front end the rest uh, is uh, uh, needed for handling errors so uh, as usual we have two lines of code and and 10 lines of error handling uh, whenever we have some error coming from the authentication from the verification callback uh, or if the user is not valid so we want to um, reject the, the login with some information message this is the object that contains message that we created in the verification callback so this is everything here in the login that actually does the work uh, of post-processing information after the verification callback or this, you have the the, <laughs> the short version here just to show that it's easy if you don't uh, need to manage all the errors you just have the request that user and return it to the caller because this code is only called uh, called if uh, the authenticator doesn't raise any errors and then for all the other so this is the login which is the most complex part for the rest, uh, you just, uh, for example, uh, have the get uh, courses is a public function. Everybody can call it. Uh, exams is a private function, so you must be logged in. So the difference between a public API and a private API is that in the private API, we insert this middleware that will check the validity of the session. And if the session is valid, we can use the user information from the session to personalize, to customize the, the queries and the data that we return. Okay. So after all, there are not many lines of code. No? Once everything is set up, there's a lot of setup code because we have to set, we have to set up the strategy. We have to set up the session the serialization information on the, on the session uh, and so on and the session itself uh, and uh, the middlewares but after all this long setup uh, our code becomes really simple okay we have uh, um, authenticated to check whether uh, whenever you want to check uh, whether the session is valid if the session is valid you have this request.user then you can use uh, everywhere with all the information that is automatically saved for you so all the setup is needed to have all the callbacks in the right places and uh, uh, you can trust uh, request.user to contain all the information you want and you can use it normally into your code okay so um, I, we, I, we are going to, to publish this uh, solution also on the in the in, on github later today so we can have a look 
and also in the next days we are going to publish also the full react scores uh, um, exercise with the full uh, um, let's say functionality not just the get we want it we wanted to have this simple uh, exercise just to, to check the differences between um, uh, between having or not having the, the authentication and then you have the full one that follows the same logic it just implements uh, all of the functionalities okay so this will be also the your work your job for an, for the last step of big lab number two on next monday and uh, as usual for any further questions or or, or help uh, we can see each other on slack remember next thursday we'll have the, um, the seminar by the consoft company and uh, for today i will thank you we are a bit in time and uh, let's wait for the um, uh, for, for the code that we're going to publish later today okay so thank you and bye bye to everybody